Hey guys, you can see this ancient carving of a beautiful woman. But there's something strange about her, right? She is carved with full puffed up breasts and she doesn't have a flat stomach, unlike most other carvings. Why? Because she's pregnant, that's why. And look below, this guy is holding up a cylindrical device ready to press it on her belly because he wants to listen to the heart rate of the baby inside her belly. But is it really possible to hear the heartbeat of an unborn baby without using ultrasound technology? Believe it or not, we use the same technology today. Many doctors and midwives use a device called a pinard horn instead of an ultrasound device. A lot of doctors use this device on pregnant women, and some even claim that it's easier and better than advanced ultrasound devices. If you think about it, many of the fancy electronic and computerized machines we have today were simple devices operating on basic principles of physics. But this carving changes history because we think that the Pinard horn was invented by, obviously, Dr. Pinard in 1895. That's about 125 years ago. But this carving is found in an inverted negative temple called Raniki Bab in India, and it was carved at least 1,000 years ago. So you can see that the ancient Indians were using such devices more than a thousand years ago. And I'm going to show you more evidence of advanced technology from the same temple. Here, we can see a male figure with a variety of tools. But do you see the problem here? He's holding a flashlight or an electric torch, just like what we use today. I mean, look at the similarity. A typical flashlight has a broad bulb on one end and a long slender cylinder with buttons on the other end. And that's exactly what we see today. And look at his fingers. It's almost like he's pressing a button and turning it on. Is it a flashlight? According to historians, the flashlight was invented by David Missel just 130 years ago. But we find it in this 1000 year old temple. That's why I keep saying, Raniki Vav is a very mysterious place, perhaps the most mysterious temple in the world. Maybe this device explains how ancient sculptors could carve in deep, dark chambers where there is no possibility of getting sunlight. We always find fantastic and impossible carvings in dark chambers and wonder how the sculptors carved them. If they used torches with actual fire, the walls and ceiling should have traces of carbon because of soot. But ancient Hindu temples show no trace of that. Were they using flashlight-like devices in ancient times? Was this how they were able to assemble and fit blocks perfectly, even in pitch black areas of the temple? But even in bright areas, the stone assembly in this temple is insane. They've used some really weird technology to construct the temple. Look at this area. See anything strange? If you see here, first off, you see a guy hiding and looking at this woman. But that's a completely different story. But look at the stone block, focus on the edges. Look at the shape of this block. It has so many corners. It's not a standard square or a regular stone block. And then it is 3D too, because it's going up and down on the front surface too. And look at this assembly. It still looks perfect, even after being buried in dirt for more than 500 years. Remember, Rani Kival was completely buried for many centuries before they excavated this temple about 130 years ago. 
The only way to assemble something like this perfectly is to have accurate measurement of angles. They should have been able to do precise measurements and calculate the angles to assemble stone blocks like this. So how did they measure angles in ancient times? That's right, they used an angle finder in ancient times. This device is also called a protractor and today it's used by everyone. The angle finder basically has markings to show every 10 degrees. So 180 degrees is split into 18 markings. In this temple, the angle finder is not just carved in one place, it's carved in many, many places. And I will explain why in a minute. But the ancient angle finders here have 14 markings each. So each marking is approximately 13 degrees wide. And I can show you the angle finder carved in multiple pillars and multiple levels of the structure. And that's the key. There are seven levels in this temple and it has a very unique architecture going underground steadily at an angle. You have some steps, a flat area, and then more steps followed by more flat area and so on. To create a structure like that, you need to calculate the angles very precisely between each levels. If you make a mistake while constructing one level, you can completely screw up the entire structure. Believe it or not, ancient Egyptians screwed up an entire pyramid because of this lack of understanding about angles. This is now called the Bent Pyramid. It's about 4,600 years old. And you can immediately see that the bottom half is constructed with a different angle and the top half is finished with a different angle. There is a difference of more than 10 degrees between the two halves. And recent structural analysis done on this pyramid shows that they made a mistake in calculating the angles and they tried to fix it while the construction was going on. But eventually this was a failure. So now we know why these angle finders are placed everywhere in Raniki Val. Plus, not all carvings are placed horizontally or vertically. Some are placed at specific angles. It's really cool to see some carvings at a 45 degree angle. Some figures are pretending that they're carrying the weight of the structure. Some are hanging upside down. But to carve them and place them in these angles, ancient builders would have needed these angle finders. If you think about it, to argue that ancient Indians did not use measuring instruments is stupid, right? Because without accurately measuring angles and distances, it's impossible to construct these incredible structures. In fact, in many ancient temples, we can see carvings of the ruler or rule with markings. Here's a guy and look at his hand. He's holding a long, slim rectangle. But look carefully, it has markings at specific intervals. This is actually a measuring scale or a rule to measure distances. And this carving is 1000 years old. So there should be no doubt that ancient builders of India used measuring instruments. And who is this guy? He is Lord Vishwakarma. He was an ancient engineer. Unfortunately, the other hand is broken, but there are other carvings that show what he is holding. And it's shocking. Can you tell me what this is? Yes, it is the same device you see engineers use while surveying the land. This is called a theodolite, and it tells us if the land is flat or if it has undulations. In some carvings, we can see him looking into the theodolite, just like what engineers do. If we start looking at carvings of Vishwakarma in this temple, he's shown holding many strange devices. Look at this one. 
It must be some tool like the modern day angle grinder. Today we use it for cutting and grinding various materials. You can see the distinct similarity to today's angle grinder. It has a long base and at the top there is a circle. But aren't we forgetting something here? How did they power up these ancient devices? I mean devices like the angle grinder, the flashlight, they all need electricity, right? So how did they get that source of power? It appears that ancient builders were using a strange power source. It's usually shown as a circular or rhombus shaped device on their chest. I know you're thinking that this is just a pendant attached to the chain in the neck. I thought the same, but what about this one? You can see he's completely bare chested, but there's something stuck on his chest and it has a very strange look. It looks like an advanced device. It's not something painted on him. It has thickness. That's why it's shown raised from his chest. Here's another carving showing a different figure. Again, look at his chest, a similar device attached to his chest. You cannot help but think of the Iron Man's arc reactor. Was there a name for this power source in ancient times? Yes, it was called Brahma Padartha. Sometimes it was also called Divya Padartha. And it's said that this device could vibrate and produce electricity even from sunlight. Such a device is preserved in the Jagannath temple at Puri. There is very high security in this temple and this arc reactor is kept inside the main idol of the temple. So is it possible that this is some kind of an energy device? Is this why we see very advanced devices like the flashlight carved here? What about the other advanced technology you saw in this temple? Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I am Praveen Mohan. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.